Seduction, sex, lifestyle. For the true player at heart, Global SLR presents the real kings of pickup. Vince Hollywood Kelvin and Arash motherfucking Dibazar. Be the best and fuck the rest. Gentlemen, welcome. This is another episode of the real kings of pickup. I am Arash Zafar Dibazar. And I'm here with the man who started the whole thing like 400 years ago. He's one of the first guys to ever enter the community. Was the original guy, a legend himself, the guy that I bought all his DVDs, I bought all his programs, and whenever I take a little break on YouTube, I put up who Vince Kelvin took up, and I take a look at it. So my co-host is Mr. Vince Kelvin. Vince, how are you? Arash, awesome. I'm excited to... Uh... Uh, here our guest today because uh, mm-hmm. it's it's quite a phenomenal guest. So that's right. So I'll I'll tell, I'll tell everybody who the guest is. It's none other than my own personal sorcerer. And when I say that, I don't know what you guys think in your mind, but I'll tell you exactly what it is. I want you to imagine King Arthur. He had Merlin. I want you to think of all the pharaohs that had powerful magicians and sorcerers behind them. And my path is that path as I lead wherever I go and. He is my sorcerer. His name is Frank White, also known as Aurelia Sopak. He's a dark magician, a black sorcerer, and he's dedicated his entire life. He's dedicated his soul. He's dedicated his energy to understanding, demystifying the occult and the left-hand path, you could call it. So he's my good friend, my ally, and Mr. Frank White is here. Frank, how are you, brother? Doing great. Thanks for having me, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this interview. Okay, good. So we're going to get right into it. I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to hand it over to you, Frank. You can throw it to uh, Vince, and then to me, we play uh, ping pong like that or some kind of, some kind of ball game. So uh, mm-hmm. this is the Global SLR. It's coming up. You're coming all the way from Germany. This is going to be the second time you're in Hollywood. I just saw you last month mm-hmm. in the event of Enigma, you, myself, and Vince. So you're coming back down or up or wherever we are. And uh, you're going to do a presentation in the global SLR. What is something that people can expect? I mean, you don't have to tell me what you're going to talk about, but, you know, they're like, oh, it's a, it's a dark magician, black sorcerer coming here. Uh, how can I use that? We have business people. We have pickup artists, social scientists, entrepreneurs, all kinds of people there. So give us an idea of what you're going to be bringing so people can see how it fits their reality. Hmm. Well, first of all, what I have to say is that I'm <clears throat> not expecting everybody to be uh, into the stuff that I will present or provide because I, I get that I'm a little bit edgy, okay? My stuff is uh, scary and it is uh, out of the ordinary, okay? I get that. That's what I wanted to say first. Number two is sorcery is... <laughs> Um, an ancient science. It's uh, applying the laws of the universe to benefit yourself. Okay? It is using different levels of reality and the forces that exist on different levels of reality to create the world in, in the way that you want it. Your life has to be affected in a positive way in sorcery. What you know, see, These are universal principles and universal I mean, sorcery is universally applicable to whatever field you want. I mean, there are spirits out there that can help you in any kind of field, whether it would be business, um, I don't know, social dynamics and whatever. Everything can be affected by the spirits. Anything can be um, affected by sorcery, and uh, people can benefit from the, the, the powers that I can bring into their life. With that being said, what my main concern has been for years now is basically connecting the different levels. There are many uh, people who call themselves sorcerers, but uh, all they're doing is, is uh, you know, mental masturbation. They don't apply that power to, you know, real world stuff. Um, and I'm the complete opposite. I think that it is an um, an insult to these powers that can enrich that can enrich your life and empower you in such a massive way. Uh, if you if you and if you if you don't apply it to real life goals and this is all this is what I'm about I'm someone who yes is in, in you know is around other dimensions however I'm I'm 
firmly rooted in this world and I understand the necessities that have to be taken care of in this plane. So this is what I, pro what I provide. I, will, I can help people empower themselves and enrich their life through non-physical means. This is my path and my power. Okay, got it. Vince, in regards to the same question, but from a different perspective, do you, Vince, use mental, spiritual practice and magic in your life? Wait no longer. Search no further. You are about to progress faster than ever with the most innovative, multi-dimensional mega event of a lifetime. The Global Seduction, Lifestyle, and Relationships Convention in Hollywood, September 23rd, 24th, 25th, 2016. So much more than a summit. Featuring only the best of the best true pillars of the pickup community. Vince Kelvin, Arash Dibazar, Bad Boy, Hypnotica, Adam Lyons, David Wygant, Akito Mosley, John Keegan, and James Marshall. No conference can even compare. Nothing ever like it. Lectures, workshops, parties, club access, boot camps, VIP dinner, party bus, and lifestyle exhibit. But hurry, price goes up as event gets closer. So get your ticket today at www.globalslr.com or call 323-309-3219. That's www.globalslr.com or call 323-309-3219. Uh, Arash, Frank, uh, sorry, I was muted and somebody called me at the same time. So uh, I heard, do you, you yourself use, if you don't mind repeating the, the end of the question? Yeah, the question is to you now. Do you use magic, uh, spirituality, uh, mind uh, practices, meditation? Do you use this in your life? Uh, because, again, to bring perspective and context of, why somebody who wants to be successful as an entrepreneur or be successful with women or be successful with men or money, um, why they would even consider some, uh, some other form of practice besides studying business. So I'm curious yeah. if in your life you use, you use these things. You know, within my life, I reached a place, uh, I would say it's a good 15 years ago, where there was a lot of close, but not quite. And of course, my specialty is uh, pickup. And if you guys are listening, you know those situations where it seems like you're putting in a lot with the girl and uh, you're getting some, but it's always so much of an effort. And then I remember uh, one of my uh, all-time favorite teachers, uh, Wayne Dyer, had just come up with a new book saying there's a spiritual solution to everything in your life. And I saw the title and I asked the question, I said, could it be with pickup sex as well? And that's what got me seeking for, for a little bit of a higher connection, a greater flow. And then I went completely non-linear, you know, evoking Casanova, channeling Venus, and um, exposing myself to more and more techniques. And sure enough, it closed the gap because it's not easy to deal with uh, people. So to simplify, because, you know, genuinely, as much as I've explored and ventured out there, when we shared the stage with Frank and we were starting, uh, I noticed uh, during the Edigma event, I noticed just a touch of tension coming uh, when uh, uh, I thought, okay, here you are, you're going to listen to a sorcerer and a black magician. And I'm someone who uh, has a tattoo of Kalima on my right forearm and a lot of uh, people who know about Hinduism go, oh, Kali, dangerous, be careful, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and I will turn to just about anything. I remember evoking the spirit of Jim Morrison, even Sid Vicious one <laughs> to channel some qualities, but I tensed up a little bit. And uh, two things about that, and I pass it to you, Rush. The first thing was that there is a magical rhythm also in getting a little tensed wherever we're at in life because what follows is a relief. And uh, uh, without having properly exposed, being exposed to the work of Frank, uh, the results were phenomenal. And I quickly realized that uh, we were speaking in the end the same language, 
uh, semantics and I've learned so much and it boosted everything that I was doing and uh, Rush, uh, we were talking about it the other day when uh, you were give, giving me some advice because I turned to you when I, when I need help, um, which uh, <clears throat> I was referring to the, the level of alignment and frequency during that event. Of course, it was a contribution of all three of us. And yet, so I'm really looking forward for the guys to be exposed to the work of France, uh, Frank, sorry, and uh, I apologize. Uh, to keep it simple, uh, we, uh, I heard Frank talk about different perspectives and realities. And one of my classic in pickup is always I tell women in a parallel reality right now, you be against the wall and I'll be like giving you so much pleasure. But we're not in a parallel reality. So I'm very intrigued and interested in parallel realities. And of course, everybody senses that their sense of reality is the one. You know, when people go be realistic, what they're really saying is uh, be narrow minded and uh, just like I am. Don't be. So I'll give you a perfect example for those who are new. And uh, everyday magic, I call that everyday magic and the existence of different reality, and that's a good starting point. Suddenly this morning, I omitted getting up and spending the usual 30 minutes that I spend aligning myself. It could be having sex, or and, and I do rituals in my head when I have sex, or meditation, or, you know, some ritual magic. I went straight into it dealt with a few difficult situations. So by the time 11 a.m. came around, three hours after I got going, I was misaligned. And I arrived late for an appointment, and I see in front of me a car that's not moving. And I'm thinking, fuck just what I needed. Their lights are on, how rude, who would occupy a parking space, and so on. Then I took a breath and I said, okay, let me realign with a higher reality. The moment I said that, I realized the car in front was actually leaving. I repositioned myself to take that space, and to my surprise and embarrassment, I realized that all along there was an empty spot to start with. The third spot ahead from that initial car was empty. So got it got me to remember <laughs> that at any given time, we can look at what is wrong and how it shouldn't be, and there's power, you know, it all depends on when, where, how, why, but without taking much more time, because I'm eager to hear more from Arash and Frank, there's the, I call those the three reality, there's the victim reality. Oh, who is doing this to me right now? The second parking space is the fighting. Oh, yeah, but I'm going to get that second space. And there's divine order where there's always an opening, there's a key for every door, there, there, there is that opening. And uh, the moment I realigned there was a succession of things like that. So that's my sense of everyday magic, which is within reach for all of us. If you guys look at everything that uh, is not working, uh, you're omitting the fact that there are options, solutions, and opportunities. Arash, I will then um, simply pass to you the same question. Uh, and it, it's very obvious because both of you have been the greatest exposure to magical work uh, I've ever witnessed up to date and uh, the principle that you shared, which are kept secret because it was only for people at Enigma, has been a true revolution, re revelation uh, in my life. But I'll let you uh, answer the question then, Arash. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. You know, my, my perspective continues to shift and change every single day. And it's something that I actually look forward to. Every day now is like an adventure for me. My mind is in a different place than it's ever been. But I feel like I live a thousand lives in one day, sometimes even more. And what I'm beginning to understand about magic is very simple. People are not taught magic necessarily. Let me explain this. We are taught at a young age how not to be magicians. We're taught at a young age how not to be sorcerers and warlocks and witches. Because when I watch my niece growing up, she's displaying all the tactics necessary to create a universe and step out of the tiny little baby reality. You can just watch her play. You can see the creation process she's in. And that she completely feels all the emotions that she decides to feel. She can hold a, a fake toy baby and and imbue it with life and feel in her body 
the sensations of having a child. Now, I can feel that from her. That's how I know. I can look at her and look through her. And as we get older, we're told to stop using our imagination and our will and that reality is this thing right here, you know, like the, you bump your shin, you bump your foot somewhere. That's a quick reality check. Like, hey, get out of your head, right? So one thing that I want to share with everybody is that anytime you begin to imagine, we can try an exercise right now, okay? If you're listening, you're going into two categories. This is before Global SLR, September 24th in L.A., 5th and 26th. And I want you to imagine if you're listening, you're either already going and you know it because you bought your ticket and you've made your decision. Or you're sitting there unsure or you're not going, right? Three categories. And no matter which category you fall in, try this for a second. Imagine being there at the Global Solar and seeing your favorite speaker and being in the presence of the person. Now, whether you already bought tickets, you can imagine that. If you haven't bought tickets, you can still imagine that. And if you're not going, you can still imagine that. And the beginning, the beginning of magic. I'm not saying now that's magic. I'm saying, look, the beginning is to get back in touch with our ability to disregard what the current physical reality says it is. For example, I'm supposedly in San Jose right now talking to you over the phone. And that's what reality is telling us. But if I now extend my mind for just a moment and say, well, what if, just what if, what if I was right next to Vince right now or Frank? The moment that I start to participate in the interaction of how I want to view this universe, we're beginning a magical process. And I think everybody's doing it, but you don't know you're doing it, and you're doing it wrong in the fact that you are creating for yourself a life and limitations that you actually don't want, but you're doing it. So that's what we get as within, so without, as above, so below. So that's my pers- a short perspective on it. I'm in love with it. I'm in love with the process of life, and I think every part of it is magic. As I become more and more aware in my life, I notice that drinking water has a sensation of magic to it, or walking outside and smelling the air is quite magical. It's just that we've lost touch with our ability to see. So shift in a shift in viewpoint, a shift in perspective, a shift in paradigm would begin your process of magic. Ta-da! I don't know how long I talked for, but it seemed like an hour. I'm done. Right there. <laughs> so we're going to be wrapping up. Vince, you're the rapper upper, because I don't know how to do this. Okay? Today, you're like, Arash, my young son, let me apprentice you on the ways of the podcast. You're going to start. You're going to say this. I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I don't know how to end this thing. How do we do? <laughs> well, uh, let's pass it to Frank again. This summer, treat yourself with the dream hot babe packed vacation and education of a lifetime. One entire week, ultimate, hardcore, badass, round the clock training and pickup with the world's top gurus. Announcing the 2016 7th Annual Pickup Academy Total Manhood Makeover, July 11th to 17th, 2016, in Venice Beach and Hollywood, California, with Vince California. Kelvin, Arash Dibazar, and such guest speakers as Hypnotica, Aikido, Adam Lyons, and many more surprises. Party bus, makeovers, dance classes. Go to www.seductioncoaching.com to reserve your spot. Hurry, sliding scale. Catch the best deal now. Okay, well, I'm passing the ball to Frank. And here, let's yeah. ask this basic question everybody wants to know, Frank. Okay? Why a black sorcerer? Why a dark magician? Can't you just fucking lighten up, bro? You know? Don't you want rainbows <laughs> and flowers and unicorns? Like, why? What's wrong yeah. with you <laughs> when you could do magic to go the black art? Like, are you nuts? That's the question. Well, yeah, you raise a very good point there. I mean, see, it's, it's all about consciousness, right? Everything is consciousness vibrating at different levels, even the physical world, right? And every high-level physicist will tell you that consciousness is actually a singularity. It's just a matter of how much of it 
can you access? So the reason why I do black magic is because in black magic, you work with entities that live at different frequencies than you, and you allow them to communicate with your consciousness. You allow them to access you. And at that point, they will start awakening dormant abilities within you, and they will show you how to master different levels of consciousness that are, of course, uh, related to power over different levels of reality. So as a black magician, as, as, as a dark sorcerer, your whole um, motivation is about gaining more and more power. And the, the most powerful entities out there are demonic forces, demons, okay? Um, and that's just um, that's just the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's uh, I work a lot with demons, and they have power over certain principles and uh, over certain aspects of reality, no matter what it is. And so, if you, if you work with them, if you allow them to, you know, enter your um, consciousness just by being in contact with them, right? As soon as something has entered your awareness, it is already in your consciousness. And through that interaction, they will change you and make you a more powerful being. So that is the actual reason why. Okay. Well, I get it. Completely get it. And for me, it's funny when people ask questions like that. I say, you see, if you're asking me a question, because I know that's a question in a lot of people's heads, Okay. And to me, it's really simple. If you're asking a question like that, A, it's because you really want to do it. You really want to do it, and you're basically asking for permission. So you're like, I want to study the black arts. I want to study this, but, 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 but. So what you're doing is seeking an outside point of view to tell you, yes, young lad, yes, young lady, it's okay. I approve, which already is pretty pathetic. Because if you want to do something, you go do it, you figure out if it works for you or not. That's A. Or B, you're not really interested in the answer why he did black magic, you just want to prove him wrong. So I hate questions like that, even though I asked you. I hate questions like that, because to me, when someone asks, so, like, why, why blah, 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 I say, why do you care? How does that affect you, why I fucking did it? Are you either asking permission, or are you about to tell me that I'm wrong? Because you didn't come and say, wow, that is so fucking cool. I love how you did that. You said, why? So you're either going to fucking attack me for my decision, or you want to do it and you want permission. So permission granted and uh, attack not fucking accepted. Fuck off. Okay, we're going to wrap it up then. So I'm going to pass it to you. Any final things to say for the Global SLR? Any kind of, uh... Yeah, actually, uh, I, I, I want to kind of tie it in uh, from my own uh, humble perspective uh, with utmost uh, admiration for the work you guys are doing, which I think is the next level, you know, the, the most refreshing thing that happened to me in my 25 years, uh, it is 25 years by now, somebody asked me, when did you first start doing pickup officially, and even more, um, what was the, the breakthroughs that came uh, when exposed to the teaching of a rush, and uh, a rush stops you all the time, and uh, was always surprised, because it's a good thing to be surprised, otherwise you would just hear the same old thing. So uh, the, the new angle of uh, magic and, and uh, his work with Frank ha has been another revelation for me. But to tie it in, you know, I was thinking um, when I heard demons again, you know, there was, there was a little tension, you know, there was, a, okay, <laughs> where's that going to go? I'm open-minded, I'm a badass motherfucker, you know. Uh, I'm crazy. I find uh, in, my, in sexuality there, I will, I will just like uh, call on anything. Uh, and then after spending a weekend with uh, both of you, uh, so, so something revealed itself. I thought, you know what? And gentlemen, hear this because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect it for, for, for you guys, the listener. If suddenly you wanted something, progress, and you would just go like, hey, give me this right now and you'd be totally open to it, and you would receive it, uh, then everybody would do it, and then everybody would be at the same level, and uh, it'd be just another higher level of struggle, and there would be no merit, there would be no true gratification, because true gratification comes when you know you have made it happen, you did your part. So uh, there I was, you know, with my uh, freshly inked 
arms on which I have uh, Mother Mary and uh, I have a tattoo of Jesus. And I know that for a lot of people, that, that's a frightening thing, you know. I'm getting strange looks. I mean, I'm getting like the hardcore Christian who goes, I dare you, Mohawk, pink hair guy, to put, to put uh, a Jesus on your, uh, on, your, on your arm. I see some people kind of go, uh, why? Is he looking at me right now? I see some people who go, that's stupid. And so on. But I, I thought, okay. Here's the common ground. Almost like in all the fairy tales of the promised land and you got to go through the woods and it's scary to go through the woods, there's a price to pay for any form of success. And if the entry level was one in which, okay, just step in and here you are and it happens, like I said, uh, they, they, that's not how it works. That's not a universal law. So, you know, there, there is a variety of things that will evoke an initial response of inhibition and fear and being stirred and all your superstition and all your misconceptions and all your generalization. And uh, then everybody turns around and never really access higher learning. And it happens at a spiritual, metaphysical level, no matter what direction you choose. You know, uh, for me, I had my level of inhibition of, okay, I want to be more spiritual, but what's offered to me right now? I don't want to be like a fucking saint, you know. I don't want to resign from sex. I love sex. But that was fear. That was a false concept because the closer I move to that spiritual place, the more abundantly I have of all things, the more things make more sense, the more the attachment, the superstition, all of it is, is gone. At a practical level, gentlemen, it's the same thing. You have desires. You have things that you want. The moment you get the ball rolling, inner game, suddenly you say, oh, yeah, let me go talk to girls. Oh, fear, inhibition will come. It's not a bad thing. It's what you need to address next. So don't be part of the masses that will approach the woods with sight on the castle and turn around and run away. Press through because the payoff will be phenomenal. And since we're facing the GSLR and approaching it, uh, you know, the level that of investment we put in it, it's, it's, it's insane. You know, it's like sleepless nights. It's like finding venues and this and that and being in touch and, uh, and so on. But uh, the payoff is growth like never before. All your inhibition, all your fears come true. So, gentlemen, uh, the event in yes, itself. Um, is- may, yeah. Sorry, sorry, but let me throw in one last thing, one last thought, because people get hung up on that on that name, demon, right? On that on that word, demonic. Well, see, they're evil, yes, but not in a human sense. Okay, human in human terms, evil would be like, like sacrificing whatever animals, uh, killing people, hurting people. This is not about hurting anyone. They're demonic because, see, looking at the creation myth, um, God had a plan, and in that plan, it was not. You know, a, a human being was not meant to have any kind of metaphysical power over this earth, so they rebelled, and that's why they're evil. In a, in a, you know, we live in a Judeo-Christian context, so a demon, the word demon, is associated with pure evil, and any kind of negativity has been associated with that. But it's not about hurting people; it's not about causing harm to anyone. It is all about removing blocks and removing uh, limitations that have been put upon your abilities and upon your consciousness and uh, in, uh, upon your power. That's what demons are about. Okay. So I just want to throw that in there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. And uh, uh, it, it's a uh, priceless uh, <clears throat> what clarification. And that's something that I, I realized myself. And I thank you for that because, you know, I'm always a good student and I will do whatever it takes. And that was my point for you guys. And uh, <clears throat> right after the weekend with you, I called on a couple uh, different entities that uh, it's, it's been uh, quite a ride. And uh, I, I wish to consult with you also further in the future. Uh, in the meantime, gentlemen, the journey to the global SLR that's right around the corner is the same thing. Of course, you want to be there unless you're totally unaware of how bad uh, you, you need it. So you spend a weekend with the best of the best, and we cover the whole spectrum this year. You know, you have Frank, who uh, is a sorcerer. Uh, or you have Bob Korf, who is number one celebrity vocal trainer to help you uh, with your tonality. You have Bad Boy with the rec game. You have uh, uh, Hypnotica. Uh, the, the list goes on. Of course, uh, top of the list, you spend a weekend with a rush, especially the VIP. They will have more time with a rush, with Frank, with myself, 
um, you decide, but then some, some inhibition will come. Yeah, what about the money? What about the traveling and so on? And those who came last year and are coming back this year uh, have experienced so much growth from it. So it is a journey. It's a multimedia experience. You go to globalslr.net to grab tickets. Uh, hopefully the podcast is out before the 9th. We close because there's another change of price on the 9th. And uh, you can also contact us directly, Frank, Rush, myself, messages, make it happen. And I pass it to Rush now in uh, conclusion. Okay, thank you, Vince. All right, everybody, so this is it. Um, you got to do whatever you got to do to change your condition in life. <clears throat> I think that the most exciting adventure that one can get on is the adventure of finding out your own path and your own journey, and your own life. There's nothing more exciting. It's more exciting than any book you read or any movie you watch. One of the things that I come across in my life is when I watch shows now, or when I read books, I realize that my existence is more exciting than what the author could come up with, even if I'm reading a Harry Potter or a fan of fantasy about vampires. <laughs> it's the fact that my life are better than the book, because the book keeps it tame, and I don't. I keep it raw. I want, it's all going to be over before you know it. It's all going to be over before you fucking know it. It's a blink of an eye. And you've got to pay attention to the way that you're investing your time and your energy. And if you know anything about myself, if you follow me, then you know that I, I, if I create a product, or if I do something, then it's in my mind always to return a thousandfold what someone gives me. That's how I operate. That's what guarantees my success in anything I do. Uh, I've come to realize that about Vince. It was some events back. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, but Vince called me and he said, hey, uh, the broadcast live stream was, didn't come through the way I wanted it to come through. They got it. They saw it. But the quality wasn't good enough. And he said to me, would you mind if all of those people who signed up for that program get the next boot camp that we do for free? And I said, yeah, absolutely, whatever. And I remember I went home and I told my girlfriends at the time, I said, that's really fucking cool. That because the, in his mind, the quality of the production was not high enough for what people paid. He gave them that plus another boot camp, okay? And this event wow. is being thrown by, by myself and by Vince. We are the sole creators of this event. And so both of our minds think like this. If you could hear our conversations behind the scenes, Every conversation we're having is how to make the experience better and better and better, and even if we have to put our own money in it, you need to know that. I mean, that's straight from the heart, genuine, how him and I talk, you know. Some cost comes up. It's not cheap to, to put an event. This is an event, guys. This is an event in Hollywood, in one of the most prestigious Hollywood clubs, you know what I mean, for three days with a fucking pink car. I'm like, we're, we're fucking going for it. If you came last year, I know you were shocked at the production value. It's going to be better this year. So get it right. Get it together. It's a vacation by the proper definition of it where you're going to go and get better when you come back to your life. Okay? Don't go on these stupid vacations where you come back and your life suffers because you fucking took a break from it. This is not a break from your life. This is a steroid shot in the ass. <laughs> okay? All right. Well, that's what it is. Thank, thank you, brother. I'm sure we'll talk really soon. Vince, thank you very much. Uh, so signing off for the real kings of pickup. I am a rock support motherfucker. Later. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You've been listening to the real kings of pickup with Vince Hollywood Kelvin and Arash motherfucking Divazar. Brought to you by www.globalslr.com. Call live every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to get your questions answered. Just dial 701-801-1220. Then enter 129-779-160. Followed by the pound key. To get your free pickup starter kit, go to www.seductioncoaching.com now. And remember, stay sexy. Stay sexy.